And here we go. Sources, classes, and types of law. The sources of Canadian law include the following. The first and the source of law with the most authority over all other laws. This is the highest law in the land. It's constitutional law. It overrides all other laws and all proposed laws must follow the Constitution and the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. All other laws are also tested by the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. So if a person or if a law infringes upon a person's rights, the Supreme Court helps to decide if that law should be changed and then gives an order to the government in power at the time to change that law. So remember folks, even though this is on a slideshow, the practice is to be taking notes actively while the lecture is going on. Statute law is laws passed by elected officials. Yesterday, I read an assignment that someone was talking about the Anti-Terrorism Act, when in fact the Anti-Terrorism Act was not necessarily one piece of law or legislation or act itself, but caused an amendment to multiple acts. These can include local bylaws, provincial laws, like the Education Act or the Highway Traffic Act, and federal laws, including the Criminal Code of Canada. Common law, not to be confused with civil law in this case, includes decisions made by judges in court. We'll talk more about that later. The classes of Canadian law are substantive law, which include statutes, These are laws that we as citizens have the responsibility to follow. So we have rights as citizens under the Constitution and under the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, but we also have responsibilities to follow the law. Public law, public law is the type of law that substantive law is under. Private law includes items like litigation or suing someone. So sue me. Hey, so sue me. What did I do wrong? So sue me. Procedural, procedural law are the laws that govern court process and procedure. So if you have to go in and get married, Procedural law covers the process of the paperwork that you need to fill out to get there. These are all the clerks. These are all the folks that are at the Ministry of Transportation. They are participating in procedural law. So we can see again that law comes into every aspect of our lives. Types of public law include any law that governs the relationship between you, the individual, and the state. Not the United States, but the state being Canada. In this case, it's the crown. So, the queen. Our relationship with Liz. Public law includes constitutional law, administrative or procedural law, and criminal law. 
In this case, corporations are considered persons under the Constitution. So the reason a person like myself can sue a large corporation and not try to sue all the people that work there is because the corporation is considered a person just like women are considered persons since 1927. Up until then, they were merely considered property of either their fathers or their husbands. Next. Types of public law. We already talked about that. But you can take a second to peruse this. Next. The importance of common law. So common law or precedent is also known as stare decisis. Why? Because law loves Latin. Law loves Latin. Law loves Latin. Not like the Latin Grammys, but the dead language that people still love using for law. The rule of precedent. Judges rely on decisions made by other courts in similar cases. Do judges have to follow precedent? No! I think I got that many O's there in what I said. Some cases are so old that they no longer reflect the values of a society, and a judge does not necessarily have to follow a previous decision. This is known as distinguishing a case distinguishing a okay. case where a judge in rendering a decision can reject a previous decision in favor of creating a new precedent so that might be before or when the Supreme Court gives an order to the government but it hasn't become an act or law yet like the same-sex marriage legislation a judge could look at a decision in front of them at the time and say no, I am not charging you with anything for marrying someone you love because there's a decision standing right now and the government is in the process of creating a new bill. Okay, types of private law. Tort law, which is not a pastry in this case. There is a pastry called a tort, Tort is not a pastry in this case. I mean, I'm sure you could possibly sue someone for giving you a tort that was too hot and burned your mouth, and that would be wrong. Tying that in, a tort means a wrong, if someone has wronged you by giving you a tort that was too hot and burning your mouth. Anyways, that would be negligent. But if the person says, don't put that tort in your mouth right now, because it's too hot and you did anyways, don't try to take them to small claims court. It's really hard to prove negligence. Anyways, property law is another one, including real estate law and landlord-tenant relationships, contract law, family law, labor law, and what's called estate law. Okay. Private or civil law. I'm not going to go over this in great detail because we're going to cover it later on in the course. The two parties in private or civil law are a plaintiff versus a defendant. And these are all just the types of property law that I explained before, so you're welcome to review these later. Some property law, if you're interested in this, includes intellectual property. So the whole thing about uploading and downloading music on the interwebs, which is not as gray of an area as it was before, ever since the invention of something like iTunes and Spotify, Google Play Music, all those things. And that's it. Thank you for your rapt attention. I hope that was beneficial to you.